Good evening. I'm your host, Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net, and this is the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, January 9th, 2022. Before I get into a little bit of TA, I want to make a big announcement. Check this link down below, ShadowTrader.net forward slash free. That's all you need to know. I'm going to be teaching a free webinar this coming Wednesday, which is January 12th. Again, that's Wednesday, January 12th. I'm going to be teaching a free webinar, and it's going to be titled, How I Trade Weekly Options. And I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of the different type of spreads that I use use on a weekly basis in my own account and with my subscribers and weekly options advisory. We're going to be talking about why ratio spread, broken wing butterfly, and unbalanced butterfly are some of the most important and powerful concepts and structures that you can learn if you really want to trade weekly options effectively. We're going to get into why these structures work, why they're so effective, when you should be applying them and not applying them, and I'm going to go through lots of real life examples from our performance in weekly options advisory from recently, from the end of uh, 2021, showing you how these spreads uh, work. So I definitely hope to see you there. Again, the link is down below, shadowtrader.net forward slash free. And it's going to be Wednesday, January 12th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I hope to see you there. Let's kick off our analysis this weekend with this particular chart right here, which is a weekly chart of 10-year yields, okay? This is the, it's called the TNX, and it is the yield on 10-year notes. And you can see that we had a huge week to the upside on the weekly chart, pushing all the way to like 178 almost. And we've got a resistance level right up in here, close to 2%. And this is very, very important because when I show you the chart on the weekly of the NASDAQ 100, you can see that it is almost a mirror image of this chart in terms of a flip because obviously the more growth oriented stocks do not like it when these interest rates are rising. This is a very, very important chart. And this chart, I think, is a perfect example of a concept that I learned from Jim Dalton who is my mentor in the market profile. I mention him often. You should definitely check out uh, his books and some of his courses. Uh, it's highly recommended. I think it'll take your understanding of the markets to a whole other level. But one of the things that Jim says uh, all the time is he says, what is the ruling reason? And I talk about this as well with my subscribers and in my morning report, the Peter's Pre-Market Perspective. I try to focus on getting people to understand what is the ruling reason. And what does ruling reason simply mean? Ruling reason is like the zeitgeist, if you will, or the spirit of the time, what is happening at that particular moment in the market. More accurately, you can think of it as what do traders and investors care about at the moment? What is the market focusing on? And this is very, very important because very often traders will put their focus on the wrong thing. And you have to understand what the market is focusing on. And this to me is exactly what the market is focusing right now because we've seen a continued relative strength, relative weakness back and forth between the NDX and the SPX with the NDX constantly being weaker because uh, it is more uh, susceptible to being dragged down by these higher rates than some of the sectors uh, that are in the S&P, such as financials or energy, that actually benefit from this sort of uh, relationship. So this is very, very important. Notice the breakout is huge, and we actually took out recent resistance levels here that were just about above 1.6% or so, 1.67, whatever, and now we're pushing up into these levels, and again, we've got that 2% up above us looming. If we were looking at this particular chart, and it was just a regular stock, XYZ, what would we say about this chart? We would obviously say, well, you've got big consolidation here, you've got breakout from consolidation, obviously you've got path of least resistance higher, and you're probably heading to that 2%. So if we're heading to that 2%, more than likely, I think we're going to continue to see pressure put on the NDX, which puts pressure on the S&P, and probably the bottom in this market is not quite in just yet. So now let's take a look at that NASDAQ 100 also on a weekly chart so that we can make an apt comparison with that TNX. Since we looked at that TNX on a weekly, it makes sense that we would look at the NASDAQ 100 on a weekly as well. And there's a couple of important uh, technical nuances here that I want to point out. Obviously, as I was saying uh, earlier, Notice the sort of mirror image in terms of how you have this huge green candle to the upside and a technical breakout 
uh, in the 10 year yield and you've got the NASDAQ 100 going straight down with almost an equal size candle to the downside. That's point number one. Point number two is you've had a long term sort of consolidation here of a lot of back and forth of four or five weeks or so in the NASDAQ 100. I call that uh, phenomenon candles lining up same size bodies and it indicates a lot of congestion but when that happens you always want to put the most weight obviously on the outermost candle so obviously this is uh, the last one which is this week that just ended is to the downside beyond that most importantly notice where the red bar has closed at the bottom of the range but also right on trend I'm not gonna shrink shrink the chart excuse me to show you but if you recall I've talked talked about this in past videos this particular purple line here is the long-term dominant uptrend in the Nasdaq 100 we have that same line in the S&P and that is the line that is starting from April of 2020 look what is happening now for the first time in a while we are actually testing that line this is important because what we should expect to happen now is that if those 10 year yields keep pushing to the upside, you see more pressure on the NASDAQ pushing to the downside, it will break this line. And mind you, this is a very long term trend line. I'm talking about April of 2020. We're not talking about a trend line that's just a few days or so. This is a weekly chart. Where is the next support on the NASDAQ 100? It's not until here, which is at the 14,380 area. So keep that in mind. If you look to the left here on the chart, it does doesn't look to me like there's anything here that would support tech especially because this particular move was a straight up clean move right it's a basic tenet of technical analysis you can call this TA 101 when you have an area that goes straight up without pause that type of area offers less support when prices come back down through it the same is true of gaps for instance right gaps don't offer much support until you go all the way through the gap and you come to the bottom of the gap right this is a similar situation uh, where you have again price action just moving in one direction just straight and then when price action comes through it this sort of area tends to not support as much. These types of areas that are more congested, they tend to support better because they are areas where there is clear definition of value. And value can be defined simply as price plus time, which means that there was a lot of two-sided trade going on in those areas, whereas here there was really just a lot of one-sided trade going on. Buyers were just dominating the whole uh, run here and as I was saying, that offers a lot less support on the way down should prices come back down through that area. The last chart I want to share with you is this one. It is our new weighted AD line. I was talking about this recently uh, in a past video. Many of you have already sent me emails after purchasing this from our site telling me how much it has already started to help them in the markets. And I agree. I think it's a really powerful tool to recap white line unweighted advanced decline line of the sectors that make up the s p the 11 sectors right we know what those are technology healthcare, consumer discretionary consumer staples energy real estate etc all of the 11 that make up the s p they all have different weights when you look at them in that pie chart for instance on the s p global.com uh, website and we know that technology is really the heaviest weight of the s p almost 30 full percent of the s p think about that 30 percent almost one full third of the s p is just technology and we know what's going on with the Nasdaq 100 because we just look at the chart this particular uh, indicator that we've come up with uh, if you have thinkorswim you can just uh, put it in as a study plots the unweighted sectors here and the weighted sectors as a histogram and look at the difference just simply just by simply just the Delta I mean you see just the space here how you know plotting from the open you've got obvious rotation where the higher interest rates that we just talked about at the beginning of the video remember that's actually helping some sectors like for instance financials which are like 10 or 11 percent of the s p they like that that's good for them and that's what's causing some of this push pull in the market where you constantly see the nasdaq 100 weaker and the s p 500 not as weak so this has been a great tool and notice that as the market was pretty much sideways and then down more or less you know down on Friday this is this is just Friday that we're looking at on a five minute chart I like to use a five minute different traders have told me they like different time frames uh, on this particular chart I like to put it on a five 
notice that you had lots of instances here where the uh, weighted sectors were actually uh, going negative. And even when the weighted sectors staged a little bit of a rally uh, towards the end of the day, this is about 2.30 to 3 p.m. on Friday, again, notice the delta. The delta was just so big, and they immediately went negative very quickly, and then you had this sort of following by the S&P. So I thought it would be really good for us to end on this chart. Obviously, I want to tell more people about this fantastic tool that we've come up with that has really put our quad even more on steroids, right? I like to always say that, put your quad on steroids. The quad, of course, is the shadow trader methodology of looking at the broad market over the course of the day where you have the breadth, the advanced decline line, the ticks, and then the chart of the futures in the corner. We call that the quad because you've got it divided into those four charts. Not only do I want more of you to check this out, but I felt we should end on this chart just because it really gives us an added uh, sort of dynamic about what I talked about in terms of the ruling reason. This is also part of the ruling reason in the markets and keep that in mind. Some sectors are continuing to be strong. What I feel is happening in the markets right now, however, is that the weakness in the NASDAQ is pulling everything down with it, and it's causing even that S&P that maybe doesn't want to go down as much, it's causing it at the same time to still be weak. And eventually, what you, the decision that you have to make in the market on a daily basis, and I tell this to people all the time, or I should say recently I've been telling this to people a lot in my pre-market perspective newsletter in the mornings, I've been saying you need to figure out, if you're going to be day trading today, you need to figure out who is going to be the winner of the battle. Because one of the things that can really kill you in the day time frame is if you're myopic and you're only looking at, for instance, the chart that you are trading. So you can say, well, I trade NQ. That's just what I do. So you only watch NQ. But then you don't realize that the S&P is actually strong and there's a lot of relative strength, relative weakness, and there's a lot of push-pull, and then none of your setups in the NQ tend to work. If you're going to be effective in the day time frame, you really have to look at the bigger picture. And it's important to note that all of this really extrapolates out into the bigger time frame as well for those of you that are watching that are more of swing traders or, or core traders because this really helps you to get into your trades at the right time and know when the market is actually in a situation where we may want to be getting long or getting short for longer term or not. I believe that, it, that you have to know who is winning the battle. In my opinion, the weakness in the tech stocks is winning the battle right now, is dragging everything with it. We have a serious trend line that may actually break in the NDX. That's very, very important. And you should continue to watch this relationship going forward uh, to give you a better idea, like I was saying, of when it may be an actual bottom in the market because it will be very, very difficult for the S&P to stage a broader advance unless it has everybody working together, meaning all of those sectors. So if there is this continued malaise in tech, which is what I pretty much foresee happening, I think that 10-year is going to break out further. I think we go to that 2% uh, sooner rather than later. I think it continues to add pressure. So if all of these sectors are not working together, then it may not be time to get back into the market on the long side just yet. And that's all we've got for today. Again, as a reminder, please join us on Wednesday, January 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern, free webinar, How I Trade Weekly Options. Should be very, very informative. I hope you will be there. I think you will really enjoy it. At the very least, I think you will come away with some different strategies and ideas and different ways of looking at the markets. And if eventually uh, you would like to join me at Weekly Options Advisory, shadowtrader.net forward slash options, and see how I put these concepts into work with real life examples, real trades from my own account that I send out via alert in real time, I'd love to have you there as well. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.